we remind ourselves why the Lord came. We continue to remind that verse, Luke 4, 16 to 20. Luke 4, 16 to 20. Bhavan, you are... Uh, yes. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And he opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Recovery of sight to the blind. This tonight we are going to see the freedom from blindness. So he came to give us freedom from blindness, the ability to see, to lead us from darkness into light. Remember, there are people who are blind because they cannot see. But there are also people who can see but are blind. We'll be studying about both of them. Who are blind because they cannot see. But there are who, people who see but remain blind. The Lord Jesus Christ, while he was doing ministry, healed many blind people. The man who was born blind in John 9, in Mark 10, Bartholomew, is a beggar. Then the man from Bethsaida in Mark 8, all of them were healed. He opened their eyes. Well, in Luke 24, 31. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from the sight. The two disciples who walked from Emmaus were Jesus Christ was accompanying them, but they were blind. 16, the verse, please read. 24, 16. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. Luke 24, 16. Yes, uncle. Can you hear me, uncle? No. Now you can hear when you are speaking, read it. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. Yes. Even though Christ was walking in them, they could not recognize him. They did not see him. Later, he opened their eyes and they saw. The disciples themselves would have given sight to people when he gave authority to them and send them to minister, they would have preached. Mark 8 is the central chapter of Mark's gospel. 16 chapter, Mark 8 is the central. Something central in that chapter is there. It's good to understand. Peter is writing openly about their encounter with Christ, their understanding of Christ. He is not withholding the fact that they were ignorant of who Christ was up to the eighth chapter, one to chapter one to chapter eight. None of them knew who Christ was. He writes boldly, only the devil knew. In Mark 3, 11, and Mark 5, 7, we read that.
whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they would fall down before him and shout, You are the Son of God. I seven. And shouting with a loud voice, he said, What business do we have with each other, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God, do not torment me. So from 1 to 8, these are the confessions made by the devil, but people did not know who Christ was. <clears throat> In chapter 8, verse 22. And they came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to Jesus and implored him to touch him. A fully blind man was brought to Christ. This is particularly from city of Bethsaida. And when the Lord touched him, he had partial vision. When he were touched him again, he received full vision. Totally blind, partial vision, full vision. The Spirit of God connects another blindness here. He asked the multitude, because the multitude who followed him had no clue who this Christ was, completely blind. But in eighth chapter, he asked a question 27 and 28. Jesus went out along with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he questioned his disciples, saying to them, Who do people say that I am? They told him, saying, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, but others one of the prophets. Here, see, the big crowd was totally blind, but there were few who had some idea about him as a prophet or a great leader. Partial vision. Then he turned to Peter, disciples and us, Peter answered, 8.29. And he continued by questioning them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said to him, you are the Christ. Now see, You are the Christ. Here, Peter has a complete vision of who Christ is. The first time the disciples had a clarity about who Christ was. How did he find out? Matthew 16, 17. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So here the eyes of Peter was open for a while, and what is beyond his rational mind was revealed to him. And he confesses that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Complete revelation. So they were completely blind, some people had partial vision, and here Peter had full vision. But immediately after that, the Lord was talking about his crucifixion, burial, resurrection. Peter could not understand this revelation. He refuses it. He slips back into blindness again. Surprisingly, from chapter 8 till 16th chapter, the disciples lost sight of who Christ was or his teachings. Mark 8 to 16, disciples could not fully comprehend his teachings, his ways, teaching about the cross, resurrection. They were hidden as mysteries. And he had to correct them. 
chapter 9 of Mark 10th verse. They seized upon that statement, discussing with one another what rising from the dead meant. Yes, they could not understand. Rising from dead, what is it? 32. But they did not understand this statement and they were afraid to ask him. They did not understand. 14 chapter 50th verse. And they all left him and fled. They did not understand who Christ was. 68. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. True. And he they went out onto the porch. 71. But he began to curse and swear, I do not know this man you are know this man you are talking about. Remember, these are the people who walked with him for three and a half years. In a crisis, they've forgotten. They could not. They are not able to see that he will resurrect. Is the mighty God? No. 16, chapter 14th verse. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table. And he reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. Yes. So this is a problem. They did not realize. Even after his burial and resurrection, in Luke 24, 16, we read that, 25, Luke 24, 25, Videos can be kept close, please. And he said to them, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. 31. Was it not necessary? 31. Hmm. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. 45. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. So the blindness was continuing. Only when the Holy Spirit enabled them in the Acts, we see that they received full sight. Many have knowledge about Christ. It remains as information, but are afraid to go on, obey his ways, his teachings. That remains hidden to them. They are blind or have become blind. To his teaching, they are blind or have become blind. Joyful obedience is not becoming a reality because of the inner blindness. They may say, I know, I have clearly understood, I realized. This is not because the truth has become a living practical reality for them. It's only knowledge they are talking about. We have studied again and again, knowledge is not experience. What I know very well, do I have it in my practical life? Otherwise, I'm not walking in that way. Why do people say that teaching is very hard? It's not practical. Who can do this? Why do they stop with Bible study, songs and messages? Are they not still blind? Ask the question. Are you not still blind if you say that? In John's Gospel, 33 times we see they did not believe him. Only 11 times it is written, they believed. Even that is not true belief. Example, eight chapter of John's Gospel, 30 and 31.
as he spoke these things, many came to believe in him. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. Look at this. The word is they believed. And the second verse, he is addressing to those who believed. See, we use the word believe without any significance. If somebody introduces a person and tells about him, can you believe him? Yes, I can believe because you have said. But he will not interest yours, you will not interest yourself to that person, even though you say you believe. There the word belief is, I know, I have understood, I agree with you. So what do we say? Why did the Lord say, tell these people who believed in him, 844? You are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Look at this. <laughs> they are claiming that they are Abraham's children, so they are God's children. But the Lord said, I know that you are Abraham's descendants. That doesn't mean you are God's children. You are children of the devil. When we read this, you must have looked at the face of those people. You see, we, we are believers, sir. Why are you telling we are children of the devil? Because they are not doing the deeds of Abraham. They are not believing in him and obeying him. They cannot listen to his words and accept it. 8th chapter 47. He who is of God hears the words of God. For this reason, you do not hear them because you are not of God. Inability to listen to the word of God and obey comes from something else. We may claim we are believers, but the Lord is not going to approve it if the word is not obeyed. Remember that. Certain acts, certain rituals will not make us believers. In John 9, 40, they asked a question. Those of the Pharisees who were with him heard these things and said to him, we are not blind to are we? Eh? You are saying we are blind? Are we? What is the answer? 41. Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But since you say we see, your sin remains. What is that? You say you see, but you are remaining blind. Blind to what? 39. And Jesus said, for judgment, I came into this world so that those who do not see may see and that those who see may become blind. These people have seen the miracles Christ had done and they did not confess or agree that Jesus Christ is the son of God and surrender their life. But they are following him for seeing more miracles, getting more Bible and more answers for their prayers. And they call themselves, we are believers and followers. He says, you are not. You are not. When you read that, we need to read ours. Allow the word of God to read your life now. Now, the Lord opened the eyes of the blind man who was born blind. Why did the, his own parents acknowledge it? Nine chapter of John, 21 and 22. But how he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak of himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed 
that if anyone confesses him to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. A pastor was admitted his wife in the hospital years back. After the surgery was over, the bill was to be settled. He came to the office of friend and said, can you give me a certificate with my old name, which was a Hindu name? Office of friend, I said, you're a pastor. Leave that, it is 5,000 rupees I will get if I give the old certificate. Vidanga sir, I don't do what. See, for the sake of 5,000 rupees, sometimes for 5 rupees, to get a scholarship, to get a promotion, to get a ration card, various things. Today, what happens? You are not able to confess that you are a Christian. The mother and father, even though they saw the miracle, will not confess that Jesus Christ is God because they will be put out of the synagogue. Did they believe? No, they are still blind. Willful blindness. It's not blindness unknown. Willful blindness. The Lord ridicules this blindness. Blind has witnessed. Others have witnessed. They we saw this man was blind, he was healed. Son himself told many times, the Pharisees and the leaders will not accept it. They remain blind, chose to be blind. Dear ones, have you also decided to be blind so that you are pretending blindness? So that you will say, I did not know one day. We cannot escape. John 10, 32. Jesus answered them, I showed you many good works from the Father. For which of them you are stoning me? 37. If I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. 38. But if I do them, though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I in the father. We are repeating the answers to prayer, the miracles were all done with a clear purpose of helping people to understand the one who answered them, one who performed the miracle, is the son of the great God. So because of that, what happens if you are remaining blind? We accept the blindness also. Declare the blindness. John 5.43 I come in my father's name, you don't receive me. But if someone comes in his own name, you receive him. We receive the words and teachings of commands or rules of government, doctors, police. We receive it completely and obey without any difficulty. But when we read in the word of God, we say it is difficult. The Lord is asking who is grateful. If you receive honor from one another and do not look for the honor that comes from God. Do you, if you say you believe, what does it mean? It means nothing. It means nothing. So they were not able to accept because they did not see him as they ought to see. Worship time. Wonderful words are spoken. But Luke 12, 4 and 5, which one is true? Luke 12, 4 and 5. I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that have no more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear the one who after he has killed has authority to cast into hell. 
Yes, I tell you, fear him. Fear of man, fear of God. If we are still controlled by the fear of man, fear of rejection, struggle for acceptance, honor for man, he says, you do not believe that God is great. You do not believe that God is great. Blind, still blind, not able to see who God is. Another ritual is in church sharing of testimonies, witnesses, witnessing. If you list the witnessing testimonies, so many you would have shared got a job, sickness was healed, passed an exam, travel was protected, child was given, promotion came. It will go on many things. Others have shared the testimonies. You have heard many others shared it. You would have read about it in various channels or everything you would have seen this. And then all the witnesses in the Bible, written by the Bible, cloud of witnesses. If you put them all together, it will be impossible to count, countless. But read Matthew 11, 21 and 22. Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles had occurred in Tyre and Sidon, which occurred in you, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Nevertheless, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. Huh. Why did he rebuke them? The people of Sodom has seen only one miracle. That night, the whole city, people became blind. Only one miracle. But he, we have seen so many. I said the list, if you put, you are read in the Bible, you have seen other people's testimonies, you have said, if you put them all together, oh, we have so many miracles. Now, so then people will say, if these type of miracles have happened in us, we would have repented already. But in spite of seeing all these miracles, you have not repented. So the Lord says, why the judgment comes on you? Luke 12, 48. Luke 12 and 48. The second part of that verse you read. From, from everyone who has been given much, much will be required. And to whom they entrusted much, of him they will ask all the more. See, when Mary doubted, a small young girl, how can this be? The angel did not take it serious. But Zechariah, a priest of God asked the same question, how can this be? He was made dumb. Because to him, much was given, much is requested of, demanded of. Dear ones, we have seen countless miracles. Have you repented? Have you turned to him? Have you confessed that Christ is and surrendered your life to him? The Lord teaches about the blindness. If we go through Mark's gospel, seven chapter, he gives them authority and sends them to do all miracles. In 6.30, they come back and gather around Jesus Christ and report back all the success that has happened in ministry. Then, the crowd is there, 5,000 people. They have been with him for a few days. They have no food now. What is he telling them now? 6, chapter 37, Mark 6, 37.
but he answered them you give them something to eat and they said to him shall we go and spend 200 denarii on bread and give them something to eat he gave them power to cast out demons he gave them power to raise the dead he gave them power to heal the sick now he is telling give them food oh lord where will we go what did they see him so far see him as the same person who gave them authority is telling them to do this and they could not do that 642 they all ate and were satisfied mark 6 and 42 they all ate and were satisfied and they gathered 12 baskets full now 52 for they had not gained any insight from the incident of the loaves but their heart but their heart was hardened peter writes we did not understand anything in that we were blind then we move to chapter 8 Eight chapter fourth verse. And his disciples answered him, "Where will anyone be able to find enough bread here in this desolate place to satisfy these people?" They have seen the miracle the Lord performed for feeding the five thousand. They gathered twelve baskets full. Now it's only four thousand, and they are asking, "How are we going to feed them again?" did they see him is their heart open and see eyes open to see they are blind again hmm? eight chapter eight verse and they ate and were satisfied and they picked up seven large baskets full of what was left over of the broken pieces now comes chapter 8 11th verse and 12th verse the pharisees came out and began to argue with him seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him sighing no. deeply in his spirit he said why does this generation seek for a sign truly i say no. to you yeah that's it. see they would have eaten that bread they would have also eaten the bread they have seen the miracle now they are coming and telling perform one more miracle we will believe dear ones how many times you have been repeating this lord if you answer this prayer i will surrender my life fully to you is it the 10th time or 15th time i will go for full time work lord i will leave this habit lord if you do this are you not deceiving yourself 8 18 having eyes do you not see and having ears do you not hear and do you not remember when i broke the five loaves for the 5000 how many baskets full of broken pieces you picked up see this the occasion now after the feeding the 4000 they were going in a boat they had only one bread with them 13 of them in the boat the lord was teaching something differently beware of the leaven of the pharisees the disciples took off this is he is indirectly telling as you didn't bring any bread how are you going to manage so they said this is because we did not bring any bread he is indirectly telling us oh the lord took off immediately what have you seen so far you have accompanied me all these days years You have seen that miracle. You have seen this miracle. Five thousand feet, four thousand feet. Have do you have eyes and you are not able to see? Are you blind? Do you have ears you do not hear? Are you deaf? Do you not understand? Do you not remember? In that seventeen eight chapter seventeen to twenty one you will see nine questions the Lord is raising one after another you can look at the mindset of Jesus Christ 
remember the same mindset is over us after all these miracles we have seen, witnessed, and testified, still asking the question when another problem comes. How will this happen? At this point, in the 8th chapter, the man from Bethsaida is brought. Bethsaida is a town in which most of the miracles of Christ was done, but did not see who Christ is and repent and turn to him. Hard-hearted people. They were totally blind people. They were willfully blind. And he rebukes that city and says, it will be more tolerable for Sodom than for you. Read that word for your own life, brothers and sisters. If you have not repented and turned to him, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah and also for Bethsaida than for us who have seen more miracles. But from that city of Bethsaida, one man blind, blind man received sight. Full sight. What a strange thing. Spirit picks it up from that town. And then he tells, the Lord tells him, do not go back to that town again, village again. I do not know why he said that. I believe if he had gone back into the city, they would have said, hey, you are not that man, da. you are another person. Or they will say, you are still blind, you are pretending that you are seeing, and make him blind also. See the unbelieving people who cannot see will make others also blind. So he said, do not enter that city. Christians, countless miracles, Answers, so we do not count or remember. But Bible says, count your blessings. We sing that, count your blessings, name them one by one. Because it is so much, we don't count or remember. How many have repented and turned to Christ and surrendered to him? Are we not coming back? have more answers for prayer. The Lord said, you are not seeking me because you saw the miracles and understood that I am Christ, the Son of God, and came to worship. But you ate the loaves. You want more answers for prayer. That's why you are coming. Dear ones, why are we turning to him again and again? When the, we have shared so many testimonies, but when new difficulties, pain, suffering, loss are there. Have you had any testimony at that time? Most of the testimonies are when the problem is over. You may promise I will share a testimony when the problem is over. Very good. That's very good. Retrospectively to see God is good is not a great deal. If you have seen him, can you see him in your problem, in your struggle, when you go through that? Otherwise, we are blind. Do you not want to see? Those who claim their blindness is healed, and they can see, what are they enjoying with their eyesight? What is abomination to God? What things of the world, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life, what is highly esteemed among men is abomination, detestable in the sight of God. Are we watching these things? Are we enjoying these things with the restored eyesight? things of the world and abominations to the Lord. Why we do not see the abominations as abominations? 
why they still are attractive to us? Do we have the vision of God? Do we see as God sees things? Otherwise, we are blind. Now, would it be better that we remain blind? What he told the Pharisees. If he had remained blind, it would have been better for him. Oh, sometimes with the judgment that is going to come upon people who say they have seen, they have eyesight, they have understood, remaining in blindness, Luke 10, 21 to 24. Luke 10, 21 to 24. Another instance. At that very time, he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this way was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been hand, handed over to me by my father and no one knows who the son is except the father and who the father is except the son and anyone to whom the son wills to reveal him. Turning to the disciples, he said privately, blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I say to you that many prophets and kings wish to see the things which you see and do not and did not see them and to hear the things which you hear and did not hear them what remains hidden here why it remains hidden how people love to remain blind john 3 we'll come to this passage again john 3 19 to 20 This is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and man loved the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. 19, verse, read it again. This is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and man loved the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. Look at that. Why people love darkness and not light? 21. But he who practices the truth comes to the light so that his deeds may be manifested as having been brought in God. They say their eyes are open but remain willfully blind. They choose, they chose darkness instead of light. They want to remain blind. And the Lord says, this is judgment. I need not come for another judgment. You have judged yourself and said, I have decided to perish. Matthew 13, 13 to 15. How they chose to be blind. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because while seeing, they do not see, and while hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. In their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, you will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears, they scarcely hear. And they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return. And I would heal them. What do you call this? Willful disobedience. Willful blindness. They close their eyes from seeing. Not that, not that God has not revealed it, but they chose to close their eyes 
the Lord says, oh, you are chosen. Now what can I do? What can I do? <laughs> if you want to, don't want to see something, nobody can make you see it. He came to open the eyes of the blind, but if we definitely decide, choose to remain blind. Now we come back to Luke 10, 17th verse, the 72 returned and were declaring, I mean, sharing with the Lord, the success in ministry they had, how the spirits were subjecting to them in the name of Christ, they were enjoying, rejoicing in that. The Lord said in 1020, do not rejoice in that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. We have studied this. The first one is honor from man. You yourself feel good because something is happening. Others will praise you, you get honor from people. But the Lord says, that is not in the kingdom of God. You need to learn to rejoice that your names are written in heaven means the joy of being a child of God, treasure on treasure in heaven. Now, then he turns and tells, Father, you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent. What is hidden? Of the two which is more glorious. Honor from man, success, achievement is that, or honored by God as the child of God, inheritance, you receive inheritance into eternal life, which is great. Rational thing is the wise and prudent will say, what is visible is great. The rich young ruler, when he came, he was thinking rationally and said, I won't leave what I'm holding. You are promising me something which I cannot see, which cannot handle. Treasure in heaven. I don't want that. He went away sad. But Zacchaeus saw that and he sold everything in order to take hold of that. The Lord said, today salvation has come to this house. He took this step by faith. Now the Lord says in Luke chapter, it is hidden from the wise and prudent, but revealed to the babes, poor in spirit, who accept their helplessness. God's spirit reveals it to them. So, what do you see? Each one of you will listening. Which are you appreciating all the time? Which are you boasting of for you and for your children and for your... Oh, he got a good job. He had a, bought a nice car. That house is very good. What is this goodness? What is this goodness? Is it of the kingdom value, kingdom way of measuring things? Hmm? If you had been walking with Christ, the way he lived, the way he ate, the way he walked, and you looked at the other leaders of that time, riding on horses, living in luxury, eating nice food. You would have said, what is this man? What is this life? You would have never preferred it. A man came and said, I will follow you wherever you go. He said, see the birds of nest, the foxes of holes, the son of man has no place to lay my head. You want to follow me. He was not able to pay the tax because he did not have half a penny. He had to borrow it from the fish. So are they not still blind because they do not see? The disciples, I'm talking about the disciples. And those disciples, he turned to them and said, blessed are your eyes. What the kings and the prophets wanted to see and were not able to see, you are able to see. Blessed are your eyes. You have seen, you have seen the living God walking in your midst, doing miracles and performing miracles. What a blessed people are they. 
So if you have sight, why are you appreciating the abominations? Why are you praying for what is not God's will? They ask him is because they want to spend their answer in prayer in their lust. Is that what you pray for? Are we blind? Are we blind? Remember, there are two ways, willful blindness and Satan blind. Second Corinthians 3.14. Second Corinthians 3 and 14. But their minds were hardened, for until this very day, at the reading of the old covenant, the same will remains unlifted, because it is removed in Christ. John 12, 40. He has blinded their eyes and he hardened their heart so that they would not see with their eyes and perceive with their heart and be converted and I heal them. Seeing they did not see, hearing they did not hear and even though it was clearly put in their heart, they did not accept it. This is willful, purposeful blindness. Willful purposeful blindness. And that led to God blinding them. Second Corinthians 4 4. Second Corinthians 4 and 4. In whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that they might not see the light of light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Can you read it again? In whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they might not see the light of the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God. 4.6 For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Satan has blinded, but the Lord has come to open the eyes. So that is the manifesto he opened and presented to the people. This is why I have come. Now we are studying this now, and we are listening to this now. Dear ones, is your blindness healed and you are able to see clearly? Or even after receiving clarity, willfully have you chosen to remain blind? You see it very clearly, but then close your eyes. You study the Bible, you say, God spoke to me clearly and do nothing about it. You hear a message, you say, God spoke to me and you have not done anything about it. You want to tell, oh, it is good for somebody else. Have you listened and obeyed, received? The principle still stands, the measure with which you measure. Listen to the word of God. That's the measure with which he is going to give you blessings. If you have, obey. More will be given to you by the Spirit of God. But if you go on hearing and do not obey, whatever you have will be taken away. The Bible will become a book of parables, close to book. You will never understand because willful blindness makes you blind to the Spirit of God. And you grieve the Spirit of God and he doesn't teach you anything. So we need to repent here. <clears throat> the heart needs to be healed so that the eyes will see the right thing in the right way. 
blindness stems from the heart. Blindness stems from the heart. I request that you will take time to go through this word again. Each portion which we studied, you need to look into it. <clears throat> Just by saying that I know it, you do not have it. Make it clear. Make it clear. Shall we pray? Lord, this night, <clears throat> as we were reminding ourselves of the great plan of salvation, which includes opening up eyes to see things as we ought to see, as we need to see, but we also learn many were willfully blind to this. Even though they saw, they did pretend that they did not see. And the dire consequence of that also we saw, Lord. I pray that each one will accept, acknowledge the little sight you give. They have a great desire to walk in the light. A little while you said, a little while the light is with you, walk in the light, as long as you have light. The great dark times will come when we will not be able to see. Prepare ourselves, Lord. We pray that each one will prepare. You will prepare our hearts. Pray that when they begin to see, they'll be able to guide others Otherwise, a blind person will lead a blind and both will fall into pictures. Oh Lord, we pray that all these children will walk in the light, will come out of blindness to see you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.